Ciao amici e benvenuti a questo corso su come preparare una pizza classica al Pix Due Flix. Hello friends, welcome to this course on making pizza classica on Pix to Flix. In the background is the beautiful village of Gaeta, Italy which was my home for more than three years. This amazing seaside town is located between Naples and Rome on the Mediterranean coast. It's also the place where the word pizza was first recorded in writing over a thousand years ago in 997 AD. Loyal Pix2Flix subscribers and viewers to my channel will recognize there is something a little different about this video and those to follow, and I don't just mean Digital Dennis the Cyber Chef. Instead of publishing equipment reviews and equipment how-tos, I'm going to be putting together several series of videos actually using this equipment and accessories I've been discussing and presenting so far this year to produce what I hope will be enjoyable and informative content. This means employing the Osmo Pocket, the Osmo Action, my EOS R, maybe my Mavic 2 Pro, my Canon 1DX and 5D Mark III, and much of the other photo gear I have in my studio. Our first series will be describing how I make genuine Italian classic pizza known as Pizza Classica at home. Pizza Classica is very similar to New York style pizza here in the States and is sometimes referred to as Neapolitan American. I just call it delicious. In this, the first episode in our series, we will show you how to make the dough with Caputo Tipo 00 Pizzeria flour, what hydration level I use, and how I handcraft dough balls. You'll hear references to something called VPN pizza in these videos. VPN is Verace Pizza Napoletana, or true Neapolitan pizza. There is a strict standard to follow in terms of ingredients and methods. What I'm making here isn't true VPN pizza, and I'll mention throughout my lessons when my methods vary from VPN. Firstly, I use oil in my dough. I find this makes a crispier crust. I also don't use San Marzano tomatoes, opting instead for the sweeter, less acidic Parma type. And finally, I don't bake my pizzas in a wood-fired oven since I don't have one. I use a gas-fired pizza oven known as the Blackstone Pizza Oven. I hope you enjoy this change of pace. And as always, feel free to comment or ask questions below in the description. So now we start where all pizza starts with the dough. This dough is Pizza Classica. And what that means is it's not pure VPN. I add a little olive oil to it. It's closer to New York style dough, and uh, I like it that way. It's a little crisper, has a little more body to it, not quite as soupy. Not to say I don't like VPN and, and Napolitana dough, it's wonderful also, but this is my preference, especially to cook at home. So I'm starting off with my water. My water is at two, three, four degrees centigrade. I'm not sure where it is. It's been sitting here in the hot studio for a little while. It's liable to be higher. And I calculated that temperature by this formula I'm going to put on the screen. And you may think that's not important. I don't know. This is what I learned a few weeks ago, this formula. And I have to say that ever since I've been using this, my dough is, or my crust have turned out perfectly. So I'm convinced. I'm an engineer by background. So formula, me, simpatico. So that's... That's what I did, and I'll, I'll go through the explanation as follows. To calculate the temperature water required, you take three times the desired dough temperature, minus the sum of the ambient temperature, the temperature of the flour, and the temperature factor for the mixer. The desired dough temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. That's the optimal post-mixer dough temp. Ambient temperature, it was a warm day, was 25 degrees Celsius. The flour temperature was also 25 degrees Celsius. And the mixer factor temperature is 13 degrees Celsius. That comes from the fact that my mixer is a planetary type mixer. And those factors for temperatures anywhere between 12 and 14 degrees Celsius. So I used 13 degrees. Doing the math, the water temperature is 3 times 22 or 66 minus the sum of all those items, which is 63 degrees. And that ends up with the water temperature being 3 degrees Celsius. 3 degrees Celsius is approximately 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right around what most refrigerators keep their temperature at. It's on, it's on speed two. Most commercial mixers only have two speeds. 
and uh, this goes zero to ten. So I start off at two, and when I shift into second speed, I go into four. So I think KitchenAid's about the same. This is a Cuisinart mixer. I'm looking for it to get about consistency with pancake batter. I'm shaking it. I'm shaking it to sort of distribute it a little bit. It tends to get a little bit smooshed together. And what I'm trying to do again is get it to where it's sort of like pancake batter. That's not quite there yet. All right, I'm about at that point. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it off. Raise the head. And I'm gonna put in my yeast. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the yeast to get in the network and mesh of the dough and the gluten that's developing. And this is instant dry yeast. All right. Yeast is in. Back it down. This is about a 60% hydration dough. I've been as low as 55 and as high as 65. 55, I didn't really like, the, the, the texture was a little bit too rigid. And at 65, it was so moist that I, I was having trouble getting it off my, uh, my peel. I don't go by time here. I know some recipes say to knead it for two, three, four minutes. I go by how it looks. And what I'm looking for in the dough is I'm looking for there to be no, just no flour for the water to have totally encapsulated in the flour. We've got a few more scoopfuls here. It's coming together kind of nice. Give it some time for the water to get around. Let me lift it up here again and sort of scrape down the sides. This is all good stuff. We don't want to miss any of this. All right. Cover me. I'm going in. Starting to develop a bit of a of a ball. That's what we want. Like I said, it's pretty warm in my studio, and these uh, these lights aren't cooling it off at all. But that's all right. It's not like it's exactly freezing in Naples, right? Huh? Hold your head up, little mixer. Let's flip this guy over. Feels cool, so that's an encouraging sign.
right. Going down. All right, that's really close. You can see it's starting to pull away from the side of the, of the mixer. So at that point, I'm going to put the oil in. This is where I, this is where I diverge from VPN. I'm going to put the oil in a little bit at a time. I'm going to stop it here, pull the head up again, and just sort of roughly mix the dough, invert it, take what was the bottom, make it the top. Hold on. There we go. I want to get this oil completely incorporated in the dough and Sort of getting everything to homogenize a little bit. There's a word for you. And we'll keep it going until we can't see the oil anymore. So when the oil is entirely incorporated into the dough, I think we'll go up to speed here. I'm gonna go to four. Hold on, we're going to speed four. Shake, rattle, and roll. Again, we're just trying to open up the dough a little bit to help the oil get spread. I don't want to smash it too much because I'm developing nice old gluten here, and I don't want to I don't want to tear the gluten. All right, down we go. That's starting to look a little bit better. Let's take a look, see how it's working out. All right, I think it's pretty taffy-like. So I'm gonna scrape it just a little bit so I can spread out the dough a wee bit. Gives me sort of a landing platform for the next ingredient, which is my salt. My next and final ingredient, that is. All right. So this is uh, this is sea salt. It's not table salt. You don't want the stuff with the the the, uh, the iodized salt. You just want regular old sea salt. Going to add a little bit in there and mixer. This table is not the most secure thing. I'd suggest doing this on a kitchen cabinet countertop. This portable table is uh, could be better. Oh, don't growl at me. I know you're working hard. I appreciate it. All right. 
This ought to do it. I'm going to let this mix for a couple minutes. All right, we're going to stop and check to see how he's going. All oh, the dough is doing in here. I don't know if it's a he or a she, I'm not sure. Still feels kind of nice and cool. I'm going to take its temperature. Cuz that's I'm a good I'm a good dough father. Great thing. I got this on a super deal uh, from Amazon.com. All right, nice. It's about 20 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. So it's actually a little bit cool. It surprised me with it being as warm. So I'm going to let, I'm going to mix this just a little bit longer. See, it's really clean in the bowl. It's part of the clean bowl club. You can also smell the uh, the motor's working hard on this on this blender or the uh, mixer. I went through three or four uh, kitchen aids over the last 25 years, and they're great. They work fine, but uh, this particular mixer was rated right top by America's Test Kitchen, Cook's Country about seven or eight years ago and I got a good deal on it I think at Bed Bath & Beyond and it's been it's been champ ever since yes I did just use the word champ let's see what they are oh we're at 21 21 20 21 20 21 whatever it takes so now after all that work we're going to get a little a little rest. So I'm taking out my dough scraper. Just want to gently pry it off of the let gravity do most of the work. Give it a little bit. I don't want to again. I don't want to tear any of that gluten, or I want to minimize tear as best as I can. Alright, again I get my dough scraper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty it out onto my marble and just, oh I see that's nice. Might need to use the dough scraper a little bit to help, but uh, I mean that's perfect. It's a little bit tacky, a little sticking to my hand. You know, but I mean, a lot of that's just some of the oil that's in the that's in the dough. So I'm going to just knead it. That's about it. So now, after all that work, we get to take a rest. I'm going to cover it in plastic. It's very important you cover it. Uh, you want to cover it primarily to keep it from drying out. Nice little rest, so we're gonna tuck tuck the dough in. There you go, good dough. Good dough. That's a good dough. Phew. And that'll about do it. We'll wait about 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and then we'll start making some dough balls. All right, well about 20 minutes have passed and our dough has had a nice rest after it had its workout. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, gonna weigh the whole thing and then divide by four. Should be about 330 grams per dough ball. 
but we're going to weigh it just to be sure. Ooh, that looks nice. Pretty, pretty. It's a very attractive lump of dough. Okay, 1370 divided by 4 is 343. An engineering degree comes in handy sometimes. Is that right? 343, yeah. We'll go 340 just to make sure. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to cover it up. All except for the very front part. And I'm going to cut some off here. I'm going to move it. It's going to kind of be in the way. Again, making sure that it's covered. I don't want it to dry out sitting on sitting on the uh, on the marble here. All right. So let's see what we got. 204. Let's try a little more. Hey, it rhymes. Three twelve. Three thirty-four. All right, three forty-one. There we go. Take this, make a little ball out of it, and then we start doing that thing we do. This is how we start to create the dough ball. Just kind of stretching it and folding it in on itself. Turn it, stretch it, fold it. And you can see we're starting to develop. I'm not all that good on this yet. Somebody who's really good can just fly through this. I sort of crawl. I'm getting there though. This is one of those things that I don't care how many videos you watch or how many books you read, you just got to do it. So another way to do this is to just, to just kind of fold it in on itself like this. This is actually how I do most of the time. And then when you get there, you want to make sure that everything, let me get my container ready to go. There we go. You want to make sure that this is nice and smooth without being torn. And we'll try a little bit more. You see I'm just rolling and tucking it under, rolling and tucking it under. And then you want to make sure that all the seams are sealed. And the reason why you want to do this is while it's proofing in the refrigerator for 24, 72 hours, or whatever you want to leave it in there, uh, you don't want it to open up. Because if it opens up, you're going to lose a lot of these precious gases in there. All right. That's one. One down, three to go. What was that number again? 340? I think so. Alright. You'll see guys if you go online, they'll have a big old hunk of burning, burning love dough, and they're just they get a long log and they just reach in there 
pull it off, twist it, roll it, and they do it like this. I'm not quite that fast. I'm nowhere near that fast. All right. You don't want to. You don't want it to stretch this too far. You don't want it to tear. I almost was getting a tear there. So, but I also want to take as many times as I can. I take the opportunity to try to to further this technique. This is one of those things that this is you're only going to do this like I said through practice. I almost feel like making a big old bunch of dough and just making a bunch of dough balls. Oh, then I'm going to have to make a lot of pizza. Shoot. I oh, will. And these these are six cup clad containers. I don't love them. They've got a little rise in the middle. I wish they didn't have that because it tends to make the dough sort of fall off to one side. Oh, hold on a second. got to see how close my math was. Looking for 340. Come on, 340! 342. Not too shabby. So anyway, these, uh, these glad containers have a little rise in the middle of them. I wish they didn't have that. The alternative is to get a dough proofing box and Doughmate makes makes something. You can buy it on their website and pay a lot of money for shipping, unfortunately, or buy it on Amazon. I think it's about 50 bucks. And it's something like 18 inches by 13 inches by seven inches and it, it's two trays. And that'd be great if we had an extra refrigerator somewhere. Um, but we don't. And I don't know that my wife's gonna be ready to give up that kind of real estate in our in our only refrigerator. So there we go. That looks pretty nice. What do you think? We're going to take these beautiful little balls of dough, and we're going to put them in the fridge for anywhere from 24 to 72, maybe 96 hours. And that's it. Here we have our balls of dough. Le pale. They'll be going in the fridge, and as early as tomorrow, we'll be able to make pizza out of them, and we might just do that. So that's how classic Italian pizza dough is made. I can't tell you how much better the pizza is when you use this recipe than almost anything you can buy in a restaurant or get delivered. You'll just have to go make some for yourself. In the next episode, we'll show you how to make a simple yet delicious pizza sauce. And in lesson three, how to stretch your dough, how to top a pizza classica, and how we bake the pizzas in our backyard at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll include the recipes for the dough and the sauce in the descriptions for each lesson. That's all for this first episode of this special series. If you liked what you saw, please smash the thumbs up button below. If you want to help me get over 100 subscribers, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when my next lessons publish. If you want to be notified immediately of any other content on my page, hit the bell icon. Thanks again for watching. I'm Dennis, and this has been Picks to Flicks.